well today is all about the beef or what's grown in a petri dish what are you going to feed your family i kind of like red meat that's raised naturally off the farm however i feel like some people are pushing against that we're going to be talking about today what the price of beef is going to be and how they're pushing against it and how i think they may be raising the prices to push you towards lab grown meat have you heard about gene edited meat man what are we doing we're changing our animals, or changing the way we think of food and animals for maybe ever. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to keep on eating the natural meat grazed on farms? Or are you going to let everyone tell you that you don't need that kind of meat because it's dangerous for you? So try this uh, lab-grown, GMO-modified meat. Today's video is going to be a good one. We're going to be jumping into some of those realities that we're living in. Today's video starts right now. Welcome to the Max. Thank you so much for being here today. It is a beautiful day, a freezing cold day. I could not live in the northern climate. So uh, these 30 degree days for me is too much. If it gets in the 20s, life is miserable. I don't want to do anything, <laughs> but I still have to. So thank you so much for being here. If you're new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, and give us a thumbs up or down, but tell us what you think about this video. So let's jump right into it. So what happened to the days of just meat raised on farm? We have gotten so far away from that where, you know, maybe 50, 60 years ago, people just literally bought it from the farmer. And then you would be buying, you know, a half of, half of a cow or half of a steer or uh, you're buying the whole cow or steer or you at least are buying partial parts of the cow or steer or you just may be supporting your local butcher and they're picking up your meat for you and you don't deal with the farmer that's okay too however if we get to the point where we take the farmer out of the equation where does our meat come from well, we see that this year, uh, beef has raised around 15% in pricing. That's due to feed shortages and some of the issues we've had with, with the harvest because that's what feed our animals. But I want to kind of pose another question to you. If we're used to feeding animals in feedlots, then that would make a difference. If you are planning on doing animals kind of like us, now we're over here by the sheep today, but you've seen our cows in other videos, and you've seen us do rotational grazing. If we do animals like that and raise them more holistically, my feed bill actually didn't go up this year. But they're saying in 2023 and 2024, beef prices are going to skyrocket. Well, why are they skyrocketing? Are they skyrocketing because the cost of grain? Are they skyrocketing because some of the businesses are not making as much money as they want to make on the people? Like, uh, I think JBS made some millions of dollars. However, it wasn't what they were thinking. They were used to making more than that. When we have only three or four food manufacturers and food growers and food providers for America, then they can manipulate the market. So we may be manipulated by just big business. But then we see uh, the WF and we see the push against this global uh, phenomenon of cows ruining the ozone. Uh, I read a study the other day that actually there's more dogs, cats, horses, and even some other smaller animals than there are cow in the world because cow is raised for food. A lot of other things are raised as pets. A lot of other things are raised for work. So why is this one animal causing so much issues? You know, they talk about ruining animals such as sheep, such as cow. But is that really what's ruining the ozone or ruining the climate? No. So we see from big business side that the prices are going to be way up. We see from the government side the push against beef. And so now we've got a problem where if we want to keep our beef, it may take a lot of money. And are we willing to spend the extra money to have our beef? Uh, we see the push for lab-grown meat. Here's the funny thing, though, is there's been billions of dollars put into lab-grown meat, and it's actually failing. They're saying don't invest in lab-grown meat and don't buy these companies' stocks because ultimately no one is buying this meat. But if we keep causing beef to go up, do we then have to buy the meat? So the question is, if if we keep seeing prices fly up, 
The alternative is to buy this Impossible Meats or buy this uh, Beyond Meat or to buy this lab-grown meat. And really, it's not cheap. It's not cheaper right now, especially. But if we see beef keep going up, it may become cheaper. Then all of a sudden, do we embrace it? So we see the lab-grown meat. Now, there's been a study push for gene edited meat so what they're going to do is they're going to gmo your cows and they're going to modify their dna to where they make them grow smaller they make them grow with less hair so they don't need to burn as much energy they may be growing quicker and faster so they won't be taking such a footprint on our earth because of climate change they've actually said it may not be safe enough to eat or it might be but we've not tested it on humans yet so if they're gmoing your beef now does that make you feel more confident because when we talk about GMO foods, that processedness that we've dealt with, we kind of see it linked to a lot of health issues that we're getting. Maybe obesity, maybe cancer, maybe other health issues. Do we really want to see that with our beef too? So are we entering a meat recession? Are we entering a GMO style beef operation that we've got to start taking in this food now instead of just the standard beef? Uh, are we going to just always have to eat lab grown meat? those are questions to think about now we're not talking about chickens today but you do know because of the avian flu 52 million birds that they have killed uh, we see price of eggs going up to 48 percent well all of a sudden all that happens there's a new food company that's all of a sudden starting to raise lab-grown chicken coincidence you decide a company called upside food is now producing lab-grown chicken cells to make chicken now, that's weird to me. So now we see the beef operation doing this, and we see now the chicken operation doing this. And if all of a sudden that the chicken and beef operation sees ways to make money on lab-grown meat and not, you know, actually raising animals, or if they find a way to modify and genetically mutate these animals to grow quicker and faster, then the consumer is going to have to buy what they sell because they're now weeding the farmer out. So let's talk about ways that we can help the farmer and ways that you can support the farmer. And don't say you can't do it. You can. But it takes us working together to push against this narrative that our food should be grown in petri dishes or GMO modified to change the DNA. That's never worked. We can't play God. We're not God. Let our animals graze naturally and let's enjoy what God has blessed us with. The farmers are here to work the land with these beautiful animals, and when they're regeneratively growing, that meat tastes better than any meat that you would ever get out of a lab-grown petri dish. So let's jump into finding out ways that we can help the farmer. The ways that you can help the farmer. You can buy a steer uh, that's ready to go to slaughter. Now, you don't actually have to buy the steer and put it on your ground. If you live in the city or an apartment, you can't have a steer in your city or apartment. We understand that. But what you're saying is to the farmer is I'm willing to buy a half of this the steer or I'm willing to buy a whole steer or me and a few friends are going to co-op it and we're going to buy the whole steer together if you'll just take it to the butcher or the abattoir for me. This happens all the time. And truthfully, you're going to save some money because you're buying it all together and you're getting a better cut and quality of meat. I would say try to find a butcher that you can trust that's giving you good quality meat and making sure they have a clean butcher and slaughterhouse. You may pay four to six dollars hanging way or you may pay a little bit more. You are helping the farmer to keep doing what he's doing. You are now getting provided a better quality meat because it wasn't raised on dirt and some feed line in a CAFOS and it wasn't sold to JBS or Tyson or Cargill or some of these big old food manufacturers that's making billions off of you. You helped a guy who's working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and you're getting better quality meat. A lot of times this is how it checks out. So I have some people say, well, I can buy ground beef from Walmart for three and four dollars a pound. Correct. But then you're buying a ribeye for $17 a pound. Well, when you're buying straight from the provider, the farmer, the farmer's not charging you probably per cut. He's charging you per weight of the cow. So then you're able to buy this animal for four, five, six dollars a pound. And yes, that means your ground beef, you may have paid a dollar or two dollars more for a better quality, higher in meat for sure. But you're paying maybe a dollar or two more for ground beef. But you're also buying your steaks and your briskets for a lot less than you would buy at a local grocer. It's, it's just, it makes sense. And you're helping a local family. 
it's all about bringing our food system back local. If we don't bring our food system back local, you're gonna be eating Petri dish meat and you won't even know it. I don't know the name of the restaurant, but they said that that, that chicken was sold in several cities to trial base run and I bet you money it wasn't known to, to the it wasn't known to the consumer that their chicken marsala was actually grown in a petri dish. If we depend on big business and government to take care of us, the more genetically modified our food gets, the more it may not be good for us. Say you live in rural areas and you have a few acres that you can grow an animal. There's nothing wrong with growing a steer or two for your family. We need to learn how to grow food. Now say you can't grow a cow. Those sheep are extremely easy to raise and they're ruminant animal, a fine quality red meat. But now you are, you are buying an animal to then put on your land to then do the same thing. So you're still supporting the farm and you're still taking to a butcher of some sort most likely to help you process that animal. But now you're enjoying the process because now you're raising these animals and you see what life they have and how good it is that you're able to love on this animal you can give them fresh grass or fresh grain every day and you're now providing for them and they're going to turn around and provide for you so now we talked about if you can't raise the animal there are farms that do that and you could buy it strictly from them they'll take it to the butcher for you and now you can have a whole half or go in with a bunch of people and split all the meat or you can literally grow your own if you have a little land to be able to do that there's places that lease land all the time and you may can look in that option too here's the thing when we look at a holistic generalization of raising animals meaning when we raise our animals in a regenerative way and we're rotating and we care for them so we are doing all we can to provide them the best quality grass the best quality feed the best quality hay and I'm not treating ours with any medicine our cows and our sheep none of them have had medicine in their in their whole life so I'm giving them a quality life of course their meat is better for me and better quality so you're getting better quality meat now here's the scary thing if if these animals are being raised in factory style farms by big business they're treating those animals they're giving them crap feed because their goal is money it's not the quality of the beef it's the money behind the beef because they want to charge you for instance it's like if you grill a burger your burger may taste a lot different than if you just go to McDonald's so that quality that we got McDonald's burger, nothing against McDonald's, but it's not gonna be the quality that you're grilling on your back porch. On the same facet, if we grow our own animals and we do it in a holistic way, our, our quality of meat is gonna be a whole lot better than a lot of big business. Now let's talk about the Petri dish meat. There was a news article that came out from the Washington Free Beacon. It says, uh, report beyond meat facility plagued by deadly bacteria and mold. The more that we put stuff in a lab, the more humans put their hands all in all this stuff, and the more we try to be God and try to grow all this stuff, the more that we try to manipulate their DNA, the more that we try to do, instead of just letting nature happen, natural beef, they call it natural beef first, unnatural beef, that's, that's a little strange, the more issues we're gonna have, the more sickness that we may get. I, I've never had contaminated meat growing off my farm. And does that not mean farms deal with that too? No, it doesn't. But when we can let these animals get natural sunlight, natural grass, natural rotation, they're not gonna be as susceptible to sickness and to the issues that uh, this modified meat is having. I told you the other day, uh, <laughs> I told you the other day, there was a story that came out that said, to save money at the grocery, you need to tr maybe cut down on uh, one or two nights a week that you're not eating meat. So do you see how our, our meat even plays into it? that if we see the normalcy of genetically raised meat, we see the normalcy of, you know, cutting meat out of your diet because it's just expensive, or if we see the normalcy of all this, these restaurants and these big businesses saying it's okay to have lab-grown meat. I mean, look, it tastes the same. It's amazing. The more that we allow that in our thinking, the more, the more that we're gonna embrace it. Think of fast food. And let's think for a second. We know the quality of fast food is subpar. We know the quality of what you're eating there is pure processed garbage for you. No offense to all you fast food people, <laughs> but we know it's not quality food. But then again, we still eat it because it's accessible or because it's convenient. 
Well, if they make beef harder to get, more expensive, harder on the farmer to make it, and they start making lab-grown meat, well, more economical. Hey, it, it looks the same. Hey, it's just as easy to buy, and you don't have to worry about, you know, you could help the climate. The more we see that, uh, the more we're going to be convinced to say, let's just, let's just eat this lab-grown meat. If our whole way of life is not natural, and we're eating all this stuff that has been processed by humans only, and it's not really grown food, and it's been GMO modified, is that really better for our health? So when you hear beef may go up, and you hear there's a shortage, or you hear that farmers are getting out, all that may be true, but it takes you going through the muck and mire and saying, I, I'm gonna support the farmer, I'm gonna do all I can to buy local meat, support a local butcher, and uh, try to bring my food back locally. If we eat more holistically and locally, I promise you, you will not see the medicines that we're having to be on. You're not going to see the, the morbidly obese situations that we're having. You're not going to see the cancers because we're not eating the processed garbage and all this stuff that's been manipulated to our food. So it's time to support beef. It's time to support the farmer again and making sure you are buying local. So the sheep and the cows all had fresh water this morning, fresh movement, and look, they're eating on their hay over there. That hay is raised right here, and it is unfertilized with no synthetic fertilization, and it doesn't have any kind of herbicides in it. So they're getting strictly good quality hay for them to live off of. So don't believe all you hear about meat. When they say it's a shortage, look into it a little bit more. It could be, because they can control a lot. But if you go to these local farmers and you say, hey, I want to support you. What can I do? How can I buy this? I promise you, there's places that do it. This hat that I'm wearing, this is from a local farmer who I personally, I mean, I, I raise all my own meat, but I supported him. I bought a hat from him. I bought merchandise and I push him locally because guess what? He's selling his local beef at his local little shop right by his home. And I want to see him do good. You know why? Because he is doing what he is doing his part in raising food for his community. The local gardener, they're raising food for their community. The local person providing eggs, they're raising eggs for their community. And now it's time to support them. Go to your local farmer or your butcher and find ways that you can purchase meat strictly from the farm. If it's if it's a hog, if it's beef, if it's chicken, if it's sheep, find ways that you can support your local farmer because we can be the change. The consumer holds, I mean, we hold the cards. If we would learn to use our money and our power of our money and the effect of dollars to say, I'm not going to buy this trash anymore, then the world will change back to where it should be in supporting local farmers. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope this video helped, give you a little insight. And I really hope that you stay away from this fake meat and this GMO meat because that is what's killing us and causing major health issues for America. Thank you guys so much. God bless. Happy homestead, y'all.